hold in these moments because you've been sitting on that start line for maybe a few minutes just getting ready. Attention, go. So away they go. Short, sharp strokes initially from the Americans. Yeah, it's quite notable there. The Americans actually look like they took quite different length strokes. Yes. And now I'm looking at their steering as well, just easing out into the middle of the course. Yeah, that was quite unorthodox, wasn't it? I don't know if it's a deliberate approach, but... I mean, it could have been. It's, it's unorthodox, as you say, but they look, they look nicely in time now. And the Germans, they've hit a good early rhythm as well. Crafting out a slender lead, which actually the Americans immediately respond to. I mean, the difference with these smaller boats is it's, it's much more doable to affect a sudden change of pace. And so you wouldn't want to draw too many conclusions from a, a half-length margin here or there, you know, within the first few hundred metres. That said, it's definitely nicer to be leaving at this stage. This is an event that's changed hands over the years. We've had four different nationalities winning this one over the last four years. The uh, Canadians winning the Stoner last year, the USA the year before that. So, GB double that won it in 2021. New Zealand has won it in 2019. Nothing, of course, because of the pandemic in 2020. So four different nationalities winning this one over the last four years. So all these four athletes have been in contention for Olympic selection this year. The Americans, I believe, are the, uh, the spares for their Olympic team going into Paris. Which is potentially very frustrating, you'd have thought. It's a tough job. It's a it really... Um, it really shows character, I think, being in that position. I think it, it takes someone with, um, with you know, a, a, a real team player to step up and play that role. And it can be the making of an athlete if they're the right age, of course. And just looking at the Americans, they're uh, in their well into their thirties, so yeah, I think often it, often the spares are, are younger and might be your, your big stars in the following couple of Olympic games. I remember uh, a couple of high-profile GB athletes being uh, spares in the squads in in Beijing and in London and went on to have glittering careers. That's right, Alex Gregory, who I was lucky enough to row with, yeah. double Olympic gold medalist. He, he had that seat and I'm I wasn't there when he did it, but I'm sure he, uh, he, he did it with, with great credit and aplomb. Here's a flag being shown on the Berkshire station to the Germans. Get back onto their side of the track. They are in the lead, but it's not necessarily going to be an advantage to umpire interference in this race and at this midpoint of the race and at this time of day as well it's going to be much noisier definitely tomorrow for the finals and potentially later on this afternoon you get the really big crowds in at this point in the day and at this point in the race on the course it's where the where the hard work goes in isn't it it's not the, not the glamorous stage of the race yeah again you're slightly further away from the bank and i suppose especially today when it's a little subdued because you know people are sheltering or they're you know, they're under their umbrellas um but some people like that you know i actually quite like the quiet and you're just there with your crew able to focus on it the crowd can um it's lovely in the you know in the enclosures when you're closing in on a win but before then it can be quite nice just to focus on your your rowing and your race and, and focus on well uh, with half an eye to the opposition as well I'm sorry to overdo the point, but look, through our commentary box window, you look up to Hamilton, down the track, it is getting brighter. Tim, you are ever the optimist. Look, it is, isn't it? Come on, back me up here. That's it, it, definitely brighter than it was an hour ago. On the Berkshire station, the Germans trying to increase their lead. It's just settled into a nice rhythm. Very neat German double. They controlled their race yesterday. The uh, lower rating Canadians never let them completely clear. They ended up winning by two lengths. Beverance and Gutfleisch yesterday. It will be telling which boats have had stiffer tests in the previous rounds when you get to this stage of the week. So the fact they had a proper race yesterday against the Canadians, the Germans, the Americans led from the start in their heat yesterday took a commanding lead and ended up they could ease off they won really easily you just wonder with that added energy today might tell 
it can be a positive and a negative that or it doesn't look like it's getting a bit closer here actually but um no having a tight test earlier in the week it can mentally i think it gets you in a better position even if physically it does take a little bit out of you yeah i suppose it gets you up to race speed you know you're in a competition but look at this the americans are right on cue showing a bit of added energy perhaps because they didn't have such a stern test yesterday i wonder if the germans have got enough to fight off this American threat through they come now that's good work from them yeah they've done very well there that angle before was a little bit deceptive a little bit flattering um, to the Germans but actually the Americans have done really well to come through there so Margaret Fellows in uh, bow seat in stroke seat Mary Nabel Fellows 33 Nabel now 37 years old Fellows has been to Henry Oragatta a couple of times previously as you say, spares fellows finishing second at US Rowing's Olympic team trials. And this is a very tight race as they head towards the bridge and the town centre. And you can see St. Mary's Church and the St. George's flag fluttering on the top of that. But incidentally, that zoomed out shot, it gives you quite a good sense of the conditions because first you can, well, you can see the rain, obviously. But you can also see the gusts on the water, but you can see how the rain has the effect of flattening the water, so it's actually quite nice to row on, even if it's not uh, the best conditions for spectating. The vibrance and gut flash have seen off that first challenge laid down by Fellows and Nobel. It's now a very even contest. The Americans with a bit more to do. There was that moment in the race which we saw unfold brilliantly where it became very level. The Americans going again. Another push from them. The uh, the style of the Germans, I think, a little bit more muscular, a little, little bit more... They, they do a bit more at the end of the stroke with their arms, with the, the Americans a little bit smoother there. Sarah Vibrant on the bow seat. He's a gut flash in the stroke seat. Yeah, so that was what you were just describing. Let's see if there's any difference in the American boat. Shall we? Here's Margaret Fellows. It is, as you say, Tim, quite, it's quite a striking difference in age between the two crews. The average yes. age in the, uh, in the American crew over a decade more than in the German crew. Yeah, it's a 23-year-old and a 25-year-old in the German crew. I thought Constantine was going to tell us the average age, therefore, of 24 in the German crew. I would have been very impressed with his maths. If that. So away they come. This is another shift on from the Germans on the Berkshire station. Oh, oh. Uh, do you see the wobble in the American boat there? I think you did, judging by your reaction. Fellows and Nobel had a, a real lurch to the left there. That uh, will take speed out their boat, of course, and that could be race over for them. It does look terminal for them. I have to say, I think they'd already lost the race, and actually it wasn't a boat stopper of a crab. With those crabs, it's often more how you react to them than, uh, than the effect they actually have on the boat. The umpire just encouraging the Americans and uh, helping out the, the Germans to get back on their side of the water, but the Germans continue, and this is going to be a win. The umpire is still asking the Germans, Vibrance and Gutflesh, to get back onto their side of the water. And over the line they come now, into the final of the Stoner Challenge Trophy they go. And the Americans, yes, I think, Constantine, you're absolutely right with your analysis there, that with a couple of hundred metres to go, they had that big wobble. I don't know if you'd go as far as to say they were catching a crab there. It was just, there was definitely uh, got stuck in the water, that's for sure, and caused them a, a lot of pace out the boat. But probably by then the race was done, I'm thinking. I think the Germans had already... Well, we see it here. Yeah, yeah. But you can see even before that, the Germans have got prob I mean, probably clear water by, by that point. It wasn't a completely missed stroke, was it? But there was uh, a very nasty moment for them. 